So was this one on the wish list as one of the ones you wanted to do? Uh, honestly, no. No, really? No, it's never been on my wish list. It's, it's something that I've always kind of dreaded having to do as a movie. Really? So, because it's, it's problematical. It's not, it's not a standard Batman story. It, looking at the comic over the years, I kind of went, every time I come to the first discussion, I'd look at it and go, it's not, it, it's not an action movie. Batman doesn't save the day. He almost doesn't do anything right in the story. Um, it's very, very bleak. It has one of the most famously messed up endings of a comic ever. And I thought these things are all anti what cinema is all about. Um, but when we decided to make it, we thought, well, let's, let's go out on a limb and just do it the way it is and not try to turn it into a summer blockbuster movie. And I, 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 I'm dying to see what people think of it. I think it's actually quite good myself, but We'll see. And I guess there was an effort to beef up the Batgirl side of the story. Yeah, well. I mean, I was always, even when the comic first came out, I was always a little bothered by what happened to Barbara. Obviously, it's just a bad thing that happens to her. Right. But uh, just the way it happens is it's kind of a classic, you know, situation where the, the female character is horribly injured so that the, the male characters can go, oh, no, and vow revenge and all that. So she's more plot device than the actual character. Um, so when we decided to expand the, the, the film's length to feature length, I really thought it was uh, probably the best thing to do would be to spend all that extra screen time with Barbara as a character. And I think that really worked out great. With, with the um, Fathom screening selling out, they're adding more showings, Fans are really excited for this. Um, do you think this could pave the way for maybe one of these animations to actually get a theatrical release? Like, I know Massacre Phantasm is from way back, and then it's kind of been dropped to be in that percent. Maybe. I'm a little of two minds about it myself. Um, these things aren't, to be completely blunt, they're not budgeted on a feature film budget. These are actually very, very small budgeted films. Um, they're very low budget. Uh, to me, I think they're, they're, they're really high-end TV productions. I, I, if we were going to go forward, I would, I, would rather, I would rather know in advance that we were, it was intended to be a feature film, and I would like the, the, the budget to be up accordingly. So I don't know that this is really going to set the paradigm you know, like reset the paradigm. I think this is kind of a special case because it is the Killing Joke. It's a famous comic. There's a lot of buzz about it. It's the first R-rated one, maybe the last R-rated one. So um, we'll see. I mean, maybe. How's that for a messed up answer? <laughs> Since it's R-rated, do, do you kind of think maybe you could go if, if you had the chance to do Dark Knight Returns as R-rated? Would you? Uh, a, I've already done it, so I don't really want to go back there. I don't like to repeat things. But do you wish, done. like, maybe you would have had that no, chance? No, because, you know, we didn't tone anything down. We didn't tone anything down on the Dark Knight Returns. We did the comic pretty much straight straight up. So, and it happened to get a PG-13. And honestly, when we made this movie, we didn't know. It, we thought it was probably a 50-50 chance that we would get a PG-13 or an R. Um, and it ended up getting an R. And home video people were fortunately very supportive and said, we'll release it that way. So, but, I mean... I never had a desire in the back of my brain to say, like, oh, if only we could do an R-rated Batman movie. I don't give a crap about that. I really don't. That's not something that I... Actually, I honestly feel, honestly feel a little ambivalent about it. I feel a little bit sad that I finally made a Batman movie that little kids really shouldn't be going to see. So I, in my heart of hearts, I keep thinking, okay, this is the guy who's on, you know, he's on Batman Bubble Bath and Batman Sheets and... Batman toys and it's like little kids grow up loving Batman it's like oh hey there's a Batman movie oh you can't watch it it's not for you do you think it's good for the character that he has so many different tones for oh, different sure. audiences or do you think it's a double edged sword that maybe you shouldn't have all these different shades of no actually I, I, I come to think of it that it's actually great I mean I think it's really smart on a purely marketing level that they go out of their way now to like market superheroes directly at little kids with things like the you know the DC superhero girls and things like that you know the Lego toys and stuff because for a long time it seemed like they were ignoring kids both in comics and in toys it's like oh the toys even the toys themselves were like all ripped and badass and you know grimacing and all that and it's kind of like whoa 
you're missing out. There's a whole generation of kids who are kind of like not falling in love with superheroes because you're passing them by. So I think it's actually makes smart from a marketing standpoint to like target them early. Um, and when you grow up with the characters, as you as you age, there's things for your age age appropriateness that you can watch as well and enjoy, so, including toys. Was it uh, was it in the plan to bring back Kevin and Mark as the Joker and Batman? Well, Mark had famously been saying for years that he would only play the Joker again if it was for the Killing Joke, and I think that was his way of just letting us know that if we ever did the Killing Joke, that he would be really, really unhappy with us if we cast anybody else uh, in the part. Um, so mission accomplished, Mark. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that kind of made casting the movie easier once, you know, we knew that if we offered it to Mark, he'd pretty much say yes. And then once we got Mark in there, it was like, okay, well then, if we have Mark, it would be really, really weird to do this movie without Kevin. So that made that an easy sell for the home video people. And then, uh, if you get Kevin and you got Mark, it's like, well, who's going to play Batgirl? <laughs> well, I guess it better be Tara Strong. So, you know, it kind of made things kind of fall into place a lot, a lot, a lot easier. With the Batgirl pre of from the prologue, do you see this more as a Batgirl movie or a Batman movie or kind of a um, nice balance between them? 50-50. I mean, I'm glad that we got to spend a lot more screen time with Batgirl. I mean, I've loved the character since like 1968 uh, or whenever it was that uh, Yvonne Craig played her. Um, but uh, I, I, she's always been one of my favorite Batman characters, so um, I would be delighted if we could do a Batgirl solo movie without any Batman in it. Um, but this is like the next best thing for me, you know, getting to spend uh, at least a good half a movie with her as the, the star of the story. Would you bring back that girl theme song to the 60s? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Maybe. Is the fun on the motorcycle? <laughs> it's a badass bike. Is there a favorite story that you still haven't adapted yet that you want to? Mm. There's a bunch. Is it going to be a Gods and Monsters follow? Um, not in the immediate future. Or then. What is in the future? I'm not allowed to say. <laughs>